Hi there, and welcome to Yearly Reviews, a show where I go through all the games that I played through the year of 2020 one week at a time. So without further ado, let's see what we're reviewing this week. There's a lot of interesting concepts that you can base your game around. You could be an unstoppable shotgun wielding badass slaughtering demons like their wet paper, or a silent protagonist solving several puzzles on a mysterious island, or a paranormal detective who can cross into a quote unquote ghost realm. But sometimes, you don't have to fully create a unique story by itself, you can borrow some bits from history and create a what if scenario for your game. Case in point, the recent boom of post apocalyptic media. We can assume this may have originated back in the 1960s with the fear of the Cold War ever present, and since then we've been worrying about nuclear warfare tearing each atom in us one by one, whether that be in books, movies, or games. Now, with games, the obvious ones to talk about are the Fallout series, but today, we'll be looking at a game that is completely different, that being 60 Seconds. 60 Seconds is about surviving a nuclear blast, but instead of wandering out into the vast beyond where the land is radiated and unfamiliar, you stay in a bomb shelter for the entire game. Okay, there's a little bit more story than that. At the start, we play as a man named Ted, who is a husband, a father, a working man, and eventually, nuclear bomb survivor. After he receives the news that a bomb is about to hit, he must grab his belongings, essential items, and family members into his bomb shelter in 60 seconds. The majority of the game has been about you making the right decisions to make the family survive and live to see the end of the nuclear apocalypse. Or not, and see a happy family turn to nothing but dust and bones. So first of all, this game's plot and overall concept is interesting. It's a survival game with a unique art style, some humour to add into the mix, and a pretty unique concept. It's not just you that you have to worry about, you have to keep the entire family in check, making sure they have enough food, water, and sanity to get through the nuclear apocalypse just outside their now irradiated bunker door. There are several ways that you can play this game. You could do the worst possible actions and look at the insane journal notes written in the family journal, or do the impossible and play this game the way that it was intended, by keeping the family alive and healthy. Well, as healthy as you can in a nuclear apocalypse. But while playing this, I just felt that something was... missing. When I first played it, I felt that feeling, and when I stopped playing it, I still felt that feeling. But to this day, I can't really place my finger on what exactly that could be. Maybe it's because of how short it felt. But then again, 88 Heroes were short and I liked that a fair bit. Maybe it was the survival aspect. But then again, managing different things in other games wasn't that big of a deal. Maybe it was this more drab and muted art style. But then again, other games with radically different art styles, both bright and dull alike, have impressed me. Maybe it's the overall repetitiveness. Oh wait, no, that actually might be it. I know it's meant to be a survival game and it's mainly to see how far you can get, but I never felt that inclined to pick 60 seconds up again and to see where I could improve on my previous run. To be honest, with such a unique concept and gameplay style, I'm a little bit disappointed that this is how I ultimately feel about this game. It has everything I love in a good game, a distinct art style, unique characters, and intriguing plot, but those elements are not used to its fullest potential. So like your dad before he went out for Siggy's 15 years ago, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. But you know what? If you like this game or are willing to check it out after my inane ramblings, there's no harm in doing so, as this is by all means not a bad game, just a disappointing one. And who knows? Maybe I'll come back to it one day and I see it as a masterpiece. It worked for a game like Beholder 2, which I disliked at first, and has now become one of my favourite games of all time. But for now, 60 Seconds is just... You know what? I've said it enough times now. Hey folks, thanks for sticking to the end of this review. If you like what you saw here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys making comments on these videos, they make up my day and I read every single one of them. If you like what you saw here, feel free to look at the newest review and look at the latest review. And if you want to watch more, feel free to hit that bell so you know when a new review drops. See ya and thanks for watching.